Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to show you how to add approvals to your Jira Service Management workflow. Please keep in mind that this only works in Jira Service Management. This will not work for your regular Jira software project. So if you need to track an approver, if you need to track somebody actually signing off on something, this is a really good use case to why use Jira Service Management. Jira Service Management is really good for IT tracking tickets, but this approval workflow process that I'm about to show you is also a great use case outside of that typical IT realm. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you drop a like if you get any value to this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comments section below. Let's jump into Jira. So this is only going to work, like I mentioned in the intro, for a Jira service management project. So I'm going to go into one of the ones that I already have, and I'm going to show you how to add approvers. Now, there's a couple of steps that you got to be mindful of, and I'm just going to basically walk you through that. First thing that you want to do, though, is you want to open up a basically an existing issue, and we're looking for fields. We're looking for a specific field, and we're going to come down here to more fields, and we're going to see that we have the approvers field. This field is critical. This whole thing won't work without that approvers field. So make sure that you have that approvers field here because this is going to play a very, very key role in making this whole thing work correctly. So once we've confirmed that, the next thing is to actually now go into the project settings of this JSM project and we're going to go to workflows. Now the interface does change here between a Jira software and a JSM project. So make sure you scroll appropriately. After that, we're going to want to figure out, well, what do we want to make these workflow for? So we're going to make it for this particular workflow here. And so I'm just going to click on the little pencil here. Once here, now we got to figure out where do we want to add the approval? And so where in the workflow does the approval go? And so if we have something in progress, I want to do that. If something goes to escalated, actually, I'm going to do it here. I'm going to basically do it so that when an issue is created, I don't want my team to work on it. I want them, I want somebody to triage this and I want to basically have somebody understand, should this be escalated or this should this just go to in progress? And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to click on the status. You, you're not clicking on the transitions. You're clicking on the actual rectangle. And once you do that, you'll notice that on the right hand side, you have this edit include approval step. So I'm going to check that checkbox and then I'm going to click edit. And then we're basically presented with the interface of building out that approval. So this number of approvers is really critical. If you're going to have one approver, then you can leave it as everyone because that one individual is going to do it. If you're going to add three, four, five approvers, then you need to specify how many need to approve. Because if you add five approvers, because that field of approvers is a multi-user field, then Everyone basically means all five need to approve. But if you specify a number, then basically the first one that gets there approves it and then the thing keeps going. So you want to have that conversation internally to determine how many approvers do I really need. Now, alternatively, and not in the scope of this video, you can actually create like an approvers group custom field where you assign a group. And then you can basically say, I need one person from each group to approve. But that's not going to be in the scope of this video, but just know that you have that option. We're just going to leave everyone for now. And then the next thing, the next critical step is you got to pick your approver source. Now here, we're going to pick whether it's a service or a field. 99% of the ones that I've done have been through Jira field. And now, if you remember from the beginning, now we pick that approvers field that we double checked that was already in our project. So once you do that, you're going to click on next. And this next step here basically will tell us what happens when the approver makes a decision. So if they approve the decision, if they click the green, yes, this is approved, we will escalate. If they decline it, then we're just going to move it to in progress. Now, this is a little bit of a chicken and egg situation because in order to get to this step, you must have defined the transitions in and out of your status. So if you just have a status with nothing on it, then this step is not going to make a whole lot of sense. And you got to cancel out of here, go and add your transitions and then come back. And now you'll have your options. So make sure that you're doing that correctly. 
Now, this next one here is very important. A lot of people skip over it, but this exclude approvers from, I typically put the reporter. And what this basically means is, and I've seen this happen so many times, there's a loophole. If I submit a request, I'm the reporter, and then I add myself as an approver, and then I can approve my own request. That defeats the purpose of having the process. So I typically will exclude the reporter just so that there's no conflict of interest, if you will, where they can't just self-approve their own stuff. Anyways, that's kind of it. After that, you just click add, and then that's pretty much it. The, the next thing to do is just publish your draft. We'll just hit no on here because I don't typically back up a copy. And then we can test it out. All right, so the next thing is we got to raise a new request. We're just going to raise one that hopefully falls under that same category. I'm just going to say uh, testing approver. And then, I don't know, I'm just, just making stuff up here. Hit send. And this should hopefully create the ticket that will then allow us to visualize it. So we'll go back into the project and we will refresh our queue. So then we will go into the new one and you will see that there's add one approver. Now this is a bit of a gap. So here you basically have the option to add whoever you want as an approver. And once you add that approver, then, then this will change to one approval are needed and then I'll be able to approve it. Now, because I did a dumb mistake and I set myself up as the exclusion of the reporter, I won't be able to approve it but let me fix that real quick. All right, so I fixed my workflow real quickly. So, so when it's your turn to approve, you can actually approve in one of two ways. You can, if you have a license to JSM, you'll be able to come in here and click the approve button. Or if you don't have a license to JSM, you can actually go through the portal, which doesn't require a license, which is yet another reason why folks like this, because you don't need a license. Your, your users don't need a license to JS service management to be able to do this approval step. And so you can come up here to your requests and then you'll see your approvals and then you'll be able to basically click on this here and then you'll have the interface here to click approve. And then the final step is you actually will get an email basically redirecting you here as well to finally approve. So this is a really cool way of just, I took a really dumb example, but you can basically work out any workflow you want. And as long as you need an approver, and then you can add that approver step. And then there's automation. We can go get fancy and automatically populate who that approver should be based on a different field's conditions. And so there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of power here. Recommend you get creative. And if you like this video and you wanna see some of the more advanced things you can do here with this approver, let me know in the comment section so I can build and create those videos for you. But if you've made it this far and you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing as it tremendously helps out the channel. And if you got value to this video, make sure you drop a like. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about everything that I showed in this video, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.